example tonight's session about proxy web, the open source proxy SQL web user interface. In the next 30 minutes, I'm going to show you its features, how you can add it to your existing proxy SQL installation, and we are going to fire up a demo environment and set up a proxy SQL cluster with read by splitting, all with proxy web. A little bit about me. My name is Miklos Mukasel. I'm from Hungary. I started using Linux and MySQL back in the old days. I uh, used to work at an ISP. Then I was the main international MySQL DB for Walt Disney. Then I joined Palomino DB and Pythium, and I had the chance to work for companies like Sandwich, Fitbit, Sandesk, and Adobe. I've been uh, the senior MySQL architect for Edmodo since the late 2015. Uh, a little bit about ProxyWeb. ProxyWeb is a high-performance SQL proxy that supports intelligent load balancing, query routing, caching, read-write splitting, connection pooling, real-time statistics, uh, runtime configuration, and it has clustering. The idea of ProxyWeb uh, came because ProxySQL uses a SQLite DB to store its data. It can be queried to the standard MySQL client protocol. That means we have a backend and we only need a front end for it. The first version was created in 2018 in Python and Bootstrap 3. And ProxySQL and ProxyWeb helped us dealing with the enormous amount of traffic growth during last March. It was the first month of the pandemic. It was open source this year, and it also comes with a really nice test environment. This is a screenshot. Um, I'm going to go into this. Uh, I'm going to show you around later. Let's see its features. It's a clean and responsive design. It supports multiple proxy SQL servers. It has a customizable reporting page. Uh, there are global and per server options. For example, if you have a group of proxy SQLs that doesn't uh, have Aurora or Galera uh, servers, then you can hide these tables, making the interface cleaner. Uh, also, if you have um, proxy SQL clusters, you can make the satellite nodes read only, so you won't accidentally go into those and make changes. It's proxy SQL version independent. You can sort content by any column, ascending or descending order. It uh, has an online config editor. Uh, it has a narrow down content search. And you can paginate the content if the result set is too long. Uh, you can install it as a systemd service next to an already running proxy SQL or, uh, or completely uh, remote server. Or you can use Docker to uh, install it and pull it from the Docker Hub. If you uh, pull it from Docker Hub and allow uh, the, the Docker instance to access the network uh, king of the host, then there is no configuration needed. If you want to set it up for remote access, you have to change the credentials in the proxy sequence first, and you should enable the remote administration because by default, ProxySQL only allows uh, local administration with the default uh, username uh, password admin admin. Let's see how this looks like. We have three freshly installed ProxySQL servers here. And let's see the method when we uh, run uh, it in a drop docker and accessing the network of the host. It's running on the port 5000 by default. And as I mentioned, it doesn't need uh, to be configured if you uh, run it next to the proxy SQL and, it's, uh, and proxy that accessing it through the local host. Just there's the default connection. Now, if we go back, you can see that there are a lot of Aurora and Galera tables here. We can just hide those tables if we don't need them. This way, the interface is a lot less noisy. All right, let's go back and install it. And Let's only expose the port 5000. Let's see what happens in this case. 
it drops you an error because you cannot connect to the host networking. So let's log into the proxy SQL admin and enable remote administration. You can edit the configuration by clicking here. We will use the same IP address because in this particular case, it's running on the same host. Remote admin, remote admin. We can also hide the tables. Refreshing the configuration. And you could connect to the proxy SQL. The third installation method needs cloning the repository, then going to the proxy web directory and make install. Meanwhile, I will also show you that there are some query rules here. And under the main DB or menu, you can find the tables for the memory configuration layer and the runtime configuration layer. All right, it installed all the dependencies and now it's, it is running as a service. And, and again, since there is a proxy SQL server running on the local host, we can skip the configuration because the default is that it's connecting to the local host, the default credentials. A couple of years ago, when I tried to evaluate a proxy SQL for the first time, I ran into an issue. In order to evaluate proxy SQL, you need a MySQL database. Uh, well, not one MySQL database, but a MySQL cluster. Then if you wanna also try to run a failover, then you need to build a failover mechanism over that MySQL cluster. And if it's not automated, then it's really frustrating to recreate it all the time when you try to run some destructive test. I ran the same issue with the proxy web. So when I build the proxy web, I needed a proxy SQL, then I needed MySQL databases, and I needed an MHN orchestrator. In this case, um, orchestrator. So that's the reason I built a proxy SQL test amp that anyone can start up in a minute. And it has a lot of nice features. So it builds a MySQL source, three replicas, three proxy SQLs, one comes pre-configured, orchestrator for the failovers, GOS for monitoring, and a prox uh, and the proxy lab, of course. Let's see how you can set it up yourself. First, git, clo git clone the repository. CD compose up, and that's it. Everything should be ready between 30 and 60 seconds. First, it's creating the DBs because everything is dependent on the DBs. And go back to the slides. Now, the, when the DBs are ready, it sets up replication. It's a GTID based uh, replication, and the MySQL instances are per corner server 5.7. Now, the proxy SQL standalone comes uh, with everything pre configured. So it's working out of the box. When you fire up the test environment, it will have the servers, the query rules, the users, everything. <coughs> the donor and the satellite are for testing the settings and the setup and proxy of yourself. Now, GOS um, is uh, basically a command line tool. I just built a little web user interface on the top of it to make it uh, more easy to use. And now we are at the topology building phase with the databases. Everything else is up. And we also made the orchestrator auto discover our MySQL topology. That's completely independent from the proxy SQL. Here are a couple of hints. 
So the orchestrator is running 1.3 thousand, proxy to 5 thousand, and the health check is on the port 8 thousand. We also have sysbench, but we will talk about that a little bit later. Now, if we go to the monitoring, <coughs> We will see that our, that a lot of things are already green. We have three types of tests. There is an address test. If the port is reachable, if we are considering it okay, and there are some somewhat more advanced tests, like MySQL using my, the MySQL client to logging in to the databases through the proxy SQL and run a simple select. But you cannot do that. Uh, unless you have these databases configured in your proxy SQL. This is why it works in the standalone because it's pre-configured. But for the donor and the satellite, which are the terms for the proxy SQL cluster are not configured yet. So both the comment returns with an error code and the standard out uh, doesn't match. That's why we have two lines for these kind of tests. First of all, we are going to check what is configured in the standalone and how does it look like. If you have multiple servers configured in the config, there's a drop down menu. And as I mentioned earlier, you can set the list of hidden tables on a, on a per server basis. This is what you can experience here. On the standalone, we have a shorter list. On the donor, we have the full list because we don't know uh, what uh, we are going to set up. So let's see. We have the server set up in the proxy for standalone, the users, Sakila, and the Word database, and one for the sysbench. And we have the application share host group. The writer host group is one, and the reader host group is two. The connection pool, you know, as we can see that the proxy SQL organized and adjusted the server. So they, uh, it, it put all the servers with reader only equals zero to the host group one, which is only the DB1, and everything else to the DB2. Now it's uh, time to generate some traffic. You can see we have sysbench pre-configured to run against the standalone proxy SQL. Let's see the logs. Thread started. And the traffic will come just in a second. Until then, we can go to the query digest and oh yeah, here is the traffic. We can see that we have selects running against the host group two on the schema names uh, SB test with the user sysbench. And actually the updates are running on the host group one, which is the writer and it's great. If you check the reason why this is happening because we also set up query splitting. So all the select for updates are gonna go to the host group one which is the writer, and all the other selects are going to go to the readers. We can also check, refresh this page, we will see that the query rule two, which is sending all the selects to the readers, is increasing. So it always send all the selects to the readers. If we refresh the page, see that there are many selects are running. And if we go to the digest page, we can also use pagination because the digest page is getting bigger and bigger. Oh, it's not big enough. Maybe if we go down to 25 entries. No, well, there are only 13 entries, whatever. For example, in the global variables, we can turn on pagination and paginate the result set. All right, let's set the very same thing up on the donor. 
and on the donor only because the satellite will start replicating the donor once uh, we have a working configuration. First, let's set up the monitoring user. Oh, and one more thing. As I mentioned, the menu list is way too long here. Let's go to the settings and hide the tables we don't want to display. So the ones with Galera, Galera, Aurora, they can go on for now because we don't need them. We'll click here and it will reread the config. Now it's way easier now. Uh, first, uh, first thing, we should set up the MySQL monitoring user. It will be monitor and monitor. Submit it, it ran, and monitor if the, the MySQL monitor password is monitor, it was successful. The other thing we are going to do is increase the uh, proxy SQL uh, timeout. So if we recreate only the databases, then it won't uh, shun them immediately. This is also done, but remember, these are only in the memory, in the MySQL tables, and not in the runtime. Also, uh, we also want to set the MySQL monitor writer is also reader to false. Otherwise, ProxySQL will place the writer into the reader host group as well. We don't want to do that. We don't want to send any writes to the, reader, uh, to the writer. Let's update it and save all the changes. So they actually appear in the runtime. See, it's false. What is set up is burned. Now, the next thing we should set up <coughs> is a replication host group. We will have the writer host group with ID one and the reader host group with write, uh, ID two here, here, but not in the runtime. It's empty. It's important to save the changes. Uh, as an extra step, we also save it to the disk. Now, the host groups are in the runtime configuration. You can also see it in the URL. The next thing we should add is our servers. All four of them. But again, it's not in the runtime. So let, let's add the servers to the runtime as well and save them to the disk. Uh, what else you need is the MySQL users and the query rules. So I'm going to go directly to the MySQL users. We are going to add one user to the user, uh, to the word user and save it. Now ProxySQL creates one uh, entry for the front end and one for the back end. Don't let it confuse you. And the other thing we need is query rule. Is that into query rules, send everything uh, that is select for update to the writer host group and select all the select, uh, send uh, all the selects to the reader host group. And that's it. We have a basic setup ready. Now, uh, let's go back to the slides and the proxy SQL, um, the donor host proxy SQL has an app port. 13306. We are going to address this from the command line. See, we use the username word and the password word on the port 13306, and we executed the insert to the um, city table. We are going to also execute a select and another select on the very to the very same port. That means we should have. some things in our query digest for the proxy SQL donor. And yeah, the insert into went to the writer host group and the select from the city went to the reader. <coughs> That's great. Let's see if we have anything in the satellite. No, nothing because it doesn't have, uh, doesn't have any configuration. Let's go to the monitoring and see if it can reach the backend. You have to refresh the page and 
yep, it can totally reach the database through proxy SQL. Now let's set up the cluster. In order to do that, let's go to the satellite. Oh, to the donor first. And actually, you can execute all these queries uh, from any menu. It's just uh, better if you run it uh, from the table that you're updating so you can validate it. So update <laughs> the global variables and enable remote cl uh, cluster access. Let's see admin cluster. And it's there. We have an um, admin cluster username and password enabled. And the other thing we need is to define the <coughs> proxy SQL servers. Now, the reason why we need to run this on the donor, uh, the, uh, immediately after we configure the very same thing on the satellite, it will be replicated from the donor. If the donor's configuration is empty, if you pull an empty config, wiping out its currently working config. So you need the donor have all the information about itself as well to be able to run the configuration on the satellite. So now we have an empty satellite, no servers, no nothing, no proxy SQL servers. We could have configured the satellite to have uh, some hidden tables. So I'm gonna run the very same thing here. I configure the remote cluster access. And we are on the runtime proxy SQL servers on the satellite. And I ran the user that added the proxy SQL donor. Let's see if it worked. Let's go to the runtime query rules. And the query rules that are there. Let's check a couple of more things like the users and the servers. And even the connection pool. <coughs> Is great. All right, let's uh, go back to the donor and add a new rule. It won't match anything right now, but let's add, uh, add one with new rule ID to see if the replication between the donor and the satellite works. The rule ID three is on the donor. Let's switch to the satellite and it's also there along with the connection pool. That's great. In the meanwhile, the let's go back to the proxy SQL standalone server a bit because the sysbench is still running. There is one feature of uh, proxy web that's, that can be really useful. It can generate real-time reports from your uh, MySQL query digest. If you go to the MISC, a reporting menu, <coughs> it will, there will be multiple pre built reports. For example, this is one that, uh, this is one that lists all the queries uh, in descending order of appearance. This one is descending order of some time. So all the time, my SQL spend processing that query will be listed here in some time, and it will be descending order. This is the query. If you need more info, just click on the banner and it will everywhere drop down. Uh, the top 10 writes on the SB test schema. The update insert. Actually, they ran equally in equal numbers. Uh, you can go to the configuration and add on new ad hoc report yourself. Just follow a YML syntax. Saved it. Go to the standalone. And there is a tiny mistake. Let's fix it every time. Here it is. That was from an earlier version. 
uh, it's actually uh, fixed in the latest version and the repo. And here is the list of the top 10 selects by average time. And the, by average time, me, we meant the uh, time spent on a single execution. This is how easy to extend your ad hoc reporting through the config. Now, the final step, let's go to the, oh, sorry, let's go to the orchestrator. <coughs> Here is the current topology. Let's go back to the proxy SQL and check the connection pool. Okay, the DB1 is the writer. Let's make the DB4 source. It will take some time until the orchestrator picks up the changes. Here is the new configuration. And you can see that the proxy SQL picked up the change. It put the old DB1 writer offline and the DB4 online and put it to the host group one. And because uh, we don't add the writer to the reader's host group, it doesn't present in the host group two. You can see that the change has happened on all the proxy sequels. Basically, that was everything I wanted to show you. If you want, you can directly connect to the MySQLs. You can connect uh, them through the exposed ports. And you can just recreate the whole environment within a minute. If you ever need to recreate the, the environment, you just run make compost down and make compost up, and it will come up in a clean slate. Thank you. Don't hesitate to reach out to me if you have any questions. Have a great day. Thank you.